plant cells. So a cell is a basic membrane bound unit and it contains the fundamental molecules of life. And while there's similarities between animals and plant cells, there's definitely some differences. So you will find cell membranes, cytoplasm, and a nucleus in both types of cells, but you won't find a chloroplast, vacuole, or cell wall in an animal cell. So cytoplasm is the jelly-like material that makes up much of the cell that's inside the cell membrane excluding the nucleus. Cell membrane is semi-permeable and it surrounds the cytoplasm. It's also known as the plasma membrane. The nucleus is the body within the cell that controls its activities including inheritance. So here's a quick graphic just to show you the differences here. Animal cells do not have cell walls while plant cells do. Shapes in animal cells tend to be irregular. Plant cells are fixed and there are no chloroplasts in an animal cell but they are present in plant cells. So vacuoles are something you will only find in a plant cell. This, is, this contains watery cell sap. It's a reservoir for dissolved nutrients, enzymes, purple and blue pigments such as anthocyanins. And anthocyanins are the pigments that are responsible for the antioxidants you find in red wine and other dark colored fruits. So it's responsible for storing waste and exporting it and it also provides turgor pressure and turgor pressure is the force that pushes the plasma membrane against the cell wall. The chloroplast is the cellular body containing chlorophyll and this is where photosynthesis occurs and we're going to get much more into photosynthesis because uh, it's really involved and uh, we're just kind of going over the basics here. The cell wall is the outer covering of the plant cell and it is made up of cellulose, which is a complex carbohydrate, and microfibrils, which are fine threads. And here's a picture of the cell wall structure. The primary cell wall is made up of cellulose. The secondary cell wall is often lignified, which is rigid and woody, and that is only in woody plant material. Then we have the middle lamella, and this is uh, made up of pectins. It binds to adjacent cell walls. So cell walls keep the cells from rupturing under the turgor pressure, and they're also responsible for cell-to-cell -cell communication. So chloroplasts are where the chlorophyll pigments are contained. It captures the sun's energy, turns it into stored chemical energy or carbohydrates, uses carbon dioxide, and releases oxygen. It's made up of a thylakoid and stroma. Thylakoid is a flattened sac. It contains the pigment. It's a site of phyto photosynthesis and a stack is called a granum. A stack of thylakoid is called a granum. The stroma is the fluid surrounding the grana and this is where chemical changes are completed. And as I mentioned, we're going to get much more into photosynthesis and you'll see where this comes into play. Plasmodesmata these are fine strands of cytoplasm that pass through the cell walls. It connects adjacent cells. It controls valves. So molecules and substances can move back and forth as needed. And then mitochondrion. This is where cellular respiration occurs. It's the power generator of the cell. Then it converts oxygen and nutrients to ATP. ATP stores and supplies the cell with needed energy. And again, we will get much more into this. This is just talking about the structures.